Hi my, hi my YouTubers, my subscribers. I forgot to share one dream with y'all that I had before I moved into this apartment. Um, well, God has corrected me. It wasn't a dream. And it wasn't a vision. I want to put it to you like this. I was really stressed. God was talking to me. I was really stressed, very stressed over my husband. I didn't want to lose him. It didn't matter. You know, my husband's younger than me. He's 23. I'm 34. <clears throat> I've been known him since he was six years old. Um, There was a time that I did not want a divorce. This was at when I was living with my mother before I got this place. Uh, and I would cry. And I, I wanted my husband. You know, I... Kind of, sort of, asked got at the beginning to save our marriage. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, I I don't know how to, what to call my relationship. I don't know what to call my faith, my prayer, anything. All I know is, is I pray and ask God one thing. I don't want to be like these people on TV. You know, T.D. Jakes is starting to go into some other stuff. You know, like gay stuff and just supporting things. Um, it's my brother calling. that go and then call him in a minute um i don't even know if you guys can see me right now let me wait till that's over <clears throat> there we go um people in my church uh pe not people in my church people in the community here that i know who go to church who have established ministries like i was saying a few videos back and this is what i want to say um i've seen a lot of people's relationship with god you know, and, and you know, the, what I want, what I used to have, being in God's presence, you got to have the right heart. You know, you got to, you know, it doesn't matter if you go see the president. It doesn't matter who, where you go. You can be married to the most sweetest person. They tell you this person is a faithful person. If your heart is not right, then it's, it's it can make the situation tainted. You know, do you follow me? Do you get what I'm trying to say? And the thing about my relationship, you know, because sometimes I don't understand and I see why people get you know, religious people get jealous or whatever the case may be is I have a kind of heart that God wants. You know, I keep trying. I, you know, get up after I fall and, 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 and that's what God looks for. I'm respectful. I want to do what he wants. You know, God knows when, when, when I was all those times that I was distracted, he knew he had to just put a few things in me, you know, to get my mind and face focused on him. And, and now that I'm, you know, coming around that mountain, he took me to hell. I'm just like, I'm done. You know, I'm done with the world. Um, <clears throat> I went, I, I was, uh, I was upset. I was crying, uh, and I wanted my husband and, and, uh, God was looking at me and he always does this to me. It never fails. Um, I have a relationship with God that people, they look and they get jealous. I had to go off and say something and veer back because I have to explain to you. I'm, I'm very honest with you guys and I'm very vulnerable so that you could be like, dang, well, why is she ministering if she's not perfect and she just came to God a year ago? I'm trying to tell you guys something. I love my relationship with God because the Bible says to rejoice that your name is written in the last book of life. The race is not given to the swift. And if you really start boom marrying and, you know, certain searching scriptures, then you're going to understand that you need a real heart. You need to be righteous because you can, you can abstain from sin and not have a relationship with God. You can be a prayer warrior, pray your butt off. That's not having a relationship with God. That's not having a relationship with God, talking to God, speaking to him while you're abstaining and being righteous and holy and helping other people. What 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 did they say? Uh, Lord, Lord, uh, have we not prophesied in your name and did this, this and that? Have we not fed the hungry? You know, God is trying to give us a layout of how to be prepared for the for judgment day. You know, he said, I, I get away from you, you workers of iniquity. You can you can a worker of iniquity is a person who doesn't have a relationship with God. You can go into charity and give all this and do everything the Bible says, but you're not saving your own soul. You're not talking to God saying, I love you. You're not repenting and being truly sorrowful for who you are and sowing into yourself. So God was watching me and he saw that I really wanted to be with my husband and uh, God spoke to me audibly. This was about five months ago. I was laying on the floor of my mom's house. I was living with her and I just lost my apartment. I was heartbroken about a lot of things, but one thing I was heartbroken is I didn't want to like lose 
my marriage, no matter how imperfect, because God can come in and do whatever. People can be talking, spitting on us, and then God can just raise him up and be the greatest man of God you know, and he's short too. Um, God simply said to me like this. He said, it's not about getting back with you. It's about who he can be with. And around this time, I was upset texting him. Why is it that you don't want to be with me? And he's like, I don't want to be with you. And um, and I was like, why? Why? I was like, yeah, you're trying to get back with your baby mom, aren't you? You're going to get back with her? He's like, no. And I'm like, yes, you are. And I'm crying. And I said, I'm hurt. Don't talk to me. He's like, oh, we can be friends. I'm like, I don't want to be friends. I don't want to be friends. <laughs> and um, uh, God spoke to me. He spoke the truth. And then one day, I really drilled him after God had told me that. He said, you know... Um, we was having arguments as we were signing the divorce papers and stuff like that. He's like, she says that she wants to be, you know, she wants to give me a chance. And you know that I love her. You know that I want to be with her. And then there you go. Boom, bam. And he was saying a few things after God said that, but I got the whole layout. And how many of you know that's how God is? That's how, that's, God speaks the truth behind everything, behind every matter. And, 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 and when God speaks truth, that's why I can't let him go. That's why I love God so much. I never want to let God go. You know, I find it appalling when God comes and he's quiet, even when he's upset at me and he disciplines me. He's so loving with it. And he be, you know, a gentleman. He's a gentleman. Hey, I'm letting you know death is around the corner. You can either live or die. You know, you can either continue to serve me, come up higher, but this is where you step off the devil's ledge and come on to my territory. You've been playing back and forth a lot. You know that I love you. I chastise whom I, I, chastise whom I love, and you know, Quenitra, that I love you. God speaks to me like that. He speaks to me like a husband, and he speaks to me like a brother and a friend, and I love it. I love it. I love it. And I, I honor God. There, there, there is something within me that I, it's just, I... I, I can't let him go, and, and, and I don't know how to let let go of, of, of how to be without God. You know, he's, he's real. He's fresh, and he's ripe with me in my relationship. It's not religious. You know, I'm not all this time in prayer and still have an attitude, and then times when I feel like I'm not praying enough, he still comes. Daughter, I love you, and it makes me want to cry. One more dream before this goes over. Um, when I had the flu, I was asleep. And as I was asleep, I woke up and it was dark all around me in the dream. And then I saw one of my old pastors. Um, all I know is, you know, I can't differentiate if it's of God or not. I haven't sought God yet. I, I would not take my eyes off of him. I would not take my eyes off of my old pastor. I would not take my eyes off of him. That's all I'm going to tell you. I'm not being judgmental. Of course, this person is not all perfect. But all I know in the dream was I was watching him. And I, 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 I it, it, you know, there was no trust. There was no trust there. And wherever he went, I watched and kept my eyes on him. Um, I didn't understand that. That one or two things can happen. A witch can come to you like that and give you, um, you know, it was dark. So, you know, and, and my, my old pastor, uh, he, you know, he operates in a high anointing. So it could mean either a witch or a warlock in a high anointing. And he put a, de a deception uh, over and, and made himself look like he was somebody of my past or old pastor. All I know is, is that I'm wondering now if my flu had to do with, you know, partial of my children or whatever, because my kids went to the hospital. They never, um, you know, they never got tested. And the doctors are saying, oh, yeah, you got it from them. You know, they are showing symptoms or whatever. But, you know, I was the one who was falling sick or whatever, you know, you know what I mean? So, like, I'm just wondering, you know, because I woke up and it was dark. And that's all I saw, I saw was my old pastor. And I wouldn't take my eyes off of him. I share my, my my relationship with you guys, with God, and there's a lot of people who don't like me because they see God with his favor and what he does. I'm a unique kind of individual for this end time move. There's something that's going on in the end time, and I know, I know that I know that I know that God is using me for a special purpose. I know that, and I'm just being humble. You know, I told God I don't want nothing of what I see or what I see people doing. All I know is I want to be a real woman of God. That's my prayer, and my prayer is, is that you use me. My prayer is, is that I, I do follow the Ten Commandments. My prayer is, is that I'm humble, that you deliver me and give me a great character, and let me be a person who doesn't deny the power thereof. 
You know what I mean? And having a form of godliness. But give me a real godliness and give me real power from you, Lord God. Bless me not to be a one who say, Lord, Lord, have I not did all these things in your name. Bless me not to be a worker of iniquity. I pray basic, small things. Bless me not to be like these people and how you're disappointed in all these people who are in these churches. They sit and soak in your presence. I say, God, when I get in your presence, I want you to actually change me. And if I'm praying things, I don't, I, I don't pray just to get in your presence and soak your presence and off your spirit. Because you can soak God's spirit and go off and discern all these different things. But guess what? If you don't have the right heart, you become a witch. Did you hear what I said? If you don't have a right heart and you're before God and you're reading the word of God and you're praying and you're before God's presence and it actually ushers you into his presence. If he's not speaking to you and correcting you and telling you, hey, you're doing well while you're in my presence, while you're sitting at my feet. I see that you're here. Think about how many people pop up in the spirit and God is looking at all these people around praying and doing this and that. But they're not going, God, change me. God, deliver me. God, I, you know, change my character. You know, bless me not to leave a one out because I know that you love all. You love enemies. If you don't have people doing that, they just get in God's presence. They soak off of him like a sponge. You can do that. And then you can go out and have all this knowledge and dreams about people and talk about people. I don't want to be like that.